Hello, I'm Karen from the Needlefelter.com. Today we're going to do a tutorial recap of the Rise and Shine Felted Rooster by Irina Hughes. This is a video tutorial from FeltingTutorials.com, which is a site created and run by Living Felt. I was interested in this rooster because I want to explore different approaches to creating feathers in fiber. The tutorial costs $175. I will say I think it's overpriced. That is the price for one project and generally for that amount of money, I'd expect to receive more of a course with several projects. Felting Tutorials does have sales from time to time and this course was recently on sale for $39. So if you're thinking about purchasing it and 175 is too much, watch for a sale. This tutorial is for intermediate to advanced felters. I did purchase the kit for this project. It was priced at $49.95. I believe it does go on sale from time to time. So if you purchase the tutorial on sale, you might want to check and see if the kit is also on sale. This is my rooster armature. I like a sturdy armature, so this is pretty impressive. I did make one change in that I added spurs. Irina added them on one of the example roosters, so there were photos of it, but she didn't include them in the tutorial. But I decided to just go ahead and make them, so I made them out of clay and then just used a thin wire to attach them to the armature. So now I'm getting ready to paint the toes and the beak. I've never done a beak this way, so I'm kind of excited about this. I finished the feet, so I'm pretty happy with the way that these turned out. Looks a little menacing. And then the last thing I did was I also painted the beak. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna use some of the plastic wrap and some tape and I'm going to wrap these feet up, just kind of cover them, put a little tape over them, um, just to protect them while I work on the rest of the piece. I've completed adding the core wool. I almost always enjoy the core wool process. I think it's one of my favorite parts of building a sculpture. Arena included a very useful anatomical pattern of a rooster's muscles. That helped with both the proportion and the structure as you're building up the rooster's legs and neck. My rooster might be just a little bit on the thin side, but he's nice and tall and I'm really happy with the way he's coming along. I did run into one problem while I was doing the core wool. I covered the legs and the feet with plastic wrap, but I didn't cover the beak. And what happened was as I was working, the rooster kind of got moved around a bit and rubbed against the wool buddy or the, these are the Serafina mini stabbit wabbits. Some of the paint just wore away, even though I had sealed it with varnish. So I had to repaint and re-varnish it. And just, just a lesson learned because if I had spent the three minutes it would have taken to just wrap it in plastic like this and pin it, that wouldn't have happened. I've added the rooster's comb. It's a little bit longer or, or taller than Arena's, but I think that's because I just had so much fun making it that I couldn't stop myself. It's pretty, pretty sturdy, but it's also flexible, so you could sort of pose it if you want to. And I've finished the waddles. They may be a little bit thinner than in the pattern, but you do have to kind of almost like pleat them a little bit as you're putting them on, because if you look at photos of a real rooster, that's the way they look. I plan on just attaching them a little later. Right now I have these um, black, these are just little pin eyes. I have a set of them that I bought from Glass Eyes Online. These are really great if you use different size eyes. They're just little, little pins that you can go ahead and put in temporarily just to kind of place the eyes and, and it helps me get a feel for what size eyes to use. Now in this case, I received eyes in the kit and I don't know if you can tell, these are good quality eyes. I don't have a problem with the quality, but the issue with them is one pupil is quite a bit smaller than the other. And this would have given the rooster a pretty wonky expression if I use them. I don't really want that. To solve that problem, I found some glass eyes in my stash that were 
close to the same size and I painted the backs of them with um, gold nail polish because I had a clear pair and um, this sort of reddish brown, real, real pale reddish brown pair. While the gold on the clear eyes looks amazing, especially against the red background, after looking at reference photos, it may stand out a little bit too much. So I think I'm gonna go with the sort of reddish brown since it's a little more subtle and it will look more realistic. Here I'm just doing a little bit of finishing on a feather. I'm not going to reveal how they are made because that is an important part of the tutorial and quite frankly, it's why I was willing to pay for it. It took me a while to get comfortable using this new technique. I ended up making a total of 170 feathers. I love the variety of sizes and shapes of the feathers. I think it's going to help the rooster look more realistic. Some of the feathers have a wire shaft to help them hold their final position. Irina wrapped bare wire with fiber for her shafts. I found it difficult to both wrap the wire and then glue it to the feather without it looking messy. I had some thin paper wrapped wire in my stash. I decided to use this wire instead. I tinted or colored the paper wrap using Sharpie markers. I found it was a lot easier to glue the paper wrap wire than it was the fabric wire. I'm not sure why, it, but it just worked and I like the way it looks. Irina used super glue to glue in the tail feathers. I substituted E6000 glue. It needs to dry for about 24 hours to fully cure. My Serafina mini stab at Wabbit worked really well to stabilize the rooster while his tail feather glue was drying. The tail in the end ended up being a little bit too heavy to stand properly, so I decided to add a little weight in his chest. I made a small pouch out of muslin and filled it with about one and a half teaspoons of steel shot, and then I cut the chest open, inserted it inside, and just um, used a little bit of corbel to fill in the slice I had made. He stands very well. You can knock him and he doesn't fall over. And that's not easy to do with an animal that has this much weight supported by two, you know, relatively small feet. I credit that to Irina's armature design. She did a great job of figuring out how to design an armature that was sturdy, but allowed you to have thin legs and, and realistic looking feet. So I have all the feathers attached at this point. Out of the 170 feathers I made, I used 149. And the 21 leftovers are mostly these little tiny ones. I have a little bit more work to do on the head, and then I'm going to add a little bit of blue fiber just around the base of the tail and then put in the saddle feathers. Let's recap. This is where we started, and this is where we ended up. The Rise and Shine Rooster is an interesting and challenging tutorial. I like the feather technique. It's fiddly and I still think I need more practice, but I will definitely use it again. Here's a final photo of my finished rooster with the chicks from my chick tutorial. They look adorable together. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial recap. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And thanks for watching.